They don't have a plan. But you know what's even worse? They don't actually care that they don't have a plan. This bill is a con that makes the chaos worse. How low have they fallen and how far down are they trying to drag our proud country? They know it will undermine our reputation in the eyes of the world as a country that believes in the rule of law. Because this is about political games. This is about a lame Prime Minister making promises that he has no intention of keeping. The British public know that border security is national security, that illegal migration makes us all less safe. They know that the financial and social costs of uncontrolled and illegal migration are unsustainable. They know that if our borders are to mean anything, we must control who comes into this country and the terms under which they remain here. That's why stopping the boats is my top priority. It's why the Prime Minister made stopping the boats one of his five promises to the British people. And it's why, according to the opinion polls, the British people back this government's bill. They back this government's bill by more than two to one. This does not mean, Mr Deputy Speaker, as some assert, that the British people are xenophobic. The vast majority of arrivals, 74% in 2021, were adult males under the age of 40. The vast majority were not pregnant women. The vast majority were not young children. All travelled through safe countries like France, in which they could and should have first claimed asylum. Many, many came directly from safe countries like Albania. Now, Mr Speaker, for too long, those of us voicing concerns about the effects of uncontrolled, unprecedented and illegal migration have been accused of inflammatory rhetoric. But nothing, nothing is more likely to inflame tensions than ignoring the public's reasonable concerns about the current situation. The public are neither stupid nor bigoted. They can see firsthand the impact on their communities, and it's irresponsible to suggest otherwise. It is, and yet, Mr. Deputy Speaker, like, despite our reasonable concerns that we have raised on several occasions, like my right honourable friend, the member for Whitham, before me, I am subject to the most grotesque slurs for saying such simple truths about the impact of unlimited and illegal migration. The worst among them, poisoned by the extreme ideology of identity politics, suggests that a person's skin colour should dictate their political views. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I will not be hectored by out-of-touch lefties or anyone for that matter. Is she also worried that the criminal gangs that are exploiting people in this dreadful way at great profit? may also be linked to other types of serious crime and helping yes. finance yes. other destabilisation. Yes. Yes. I'm afraid he raises a very uh, worrying fact about what we are seeing. And when I've spoken to police chiefs around the country, what they tell me is that criminality, in particular drug supply, and usage is now connected to people who came here on small boats illegally in the first place. Thirdly, uh, but, but on Rwanda, Rwanda is a fundamentally safe country, Mr Deputy Speaker, as affirmed by the High Court. It's got a proud track record of helping the world's most vulnerable, including refugees for the United Nations. And thirdly, the small boats crisis demonstrates that there are countless more, there are countless, uh, there are 100 million people who are displaced globally. That is confirmed by the United Nations. And our critics pretend simultaneously that the United Kingdom doesn't have any safe, global, uh, safe and legal routes and that these routes should also be unlimited. The small boats crisis demonstrates that there are countless more economic migrants willing to take a chance to come here in search of a better life. How many of those do the benches opposite think it will take to stop the boats? They haven't been able 
to provide an answer. Because the reality is, Mr Deputy Speaker, those arguing for open borders via unlimited, safe and legal routes are, of course, they are of course entitled to do so, but they should do so honestly. They shouldn't try to deceive the public, Mr Deputy Speaker, by dressing up what is an extreme political argument in the fake garb of humanitarianism. In 2021, 73% of people who were detained for removal put forward a modern slavery claim, compared to just 3% of those not in detention. And what we've also seen is a, a number of foreign national offenders who, after serving their sentences for some of the most despicable crimes like murder and rape, have, on the point of removal, put in a last-minute claim of modern slavery to thwart their deportation. The fact is, Mr Deputy Speaker, that the modern slavery laws are being abused. Some of the nation's finest legal minds have been and continue to be involved in its development. <coughs> The UK will always seek to uphold international law, and we are confident that this bill will deliver what is necessary within those parameters. They don't have a plan, but you know what's even worse? They don't actually care that they don't have a plan. If they listened, if they listened, they would hear a clear, reasonable, and resounding message from the British people. Our asylum system under the Tories is in total chaos. Only one per cent of last year's cases have even had an initial decision. Home Office decision-making cut by 40 per cent. The backlog trebled in the space of just a few years, and thousands of people in costly and inappropriate hotels. Thirteen years in which we have now seen refugees left in limbo, even though they have fled persecution and conflict, those who are not refugees and have no right to be here, not returned, never returned, an 80% drop in returns of unsuccessful asylum seekers, and at the same time, a 40% drop in refugee family reunion visas, the Afghan resettlement scheme shamefully frozen, yeah. and children left with no way to rejoin family. Yeah. And time and again, ministers just want to blame someone else. Mr Deputy Speaker, we need urgent action to stop the dangerous boat crossings that are putting lives at risk and undermining our border security. But this bill is a con that makes the chaos worse. And this bill makes it harder to get return agreements because it undermines compliance with the international laws and standards that those other countries are committed to uphold, standards that we used to be committed to uphold as well. I hope he will also support our proposals to work on not just return agreements with France and other countries, but also family reunion arrangements and reforms to resettlement schemes in order to make those work as well. But instead, what we've got is a bill which is a con, a bill which actually will make things worse. My focus goes back to what was already mentioned, which is Clause 49 which is looking specifically at interim measures from the Strasbourg Court, which we know have no actual effect in UK law, but UK courts may take them into effect when they're passing their own judgments. Would the Shadow Home Secretary and the Labour Party support me in wanting to see this particular clause beefed up and actually making sure that the Home Secretary is under a statutory duty to, uh, to remove unlawful migrants? Well, I um, think she, he perhaps should have put that question to the Home Secretary because he appears to disagree with his own Conservative government policy and be off on another bit of freelancing for himself, further undermining, I would say, any possibility of getting international agreements, whether it's on returns or anything else. He is planning to make it even harder to get the kinds of returns agreements we need and to get the kind of international cooperation we need as well. Yeah. Bringing people into the UK illegally in order to control and exploit them is exactly what trafficking is. Cross-border trafficking is, by definition, a major form of modern slavery. Yet this government is just proposing to wish it away, to exclude it entirely from the modern slavery system, as if the very fact of crossing borders somehow stopped it being slavery at all. The message from the UK government to the criminal trafficking and slavery gangs is this. Don't worry. 
So long as you bring people into the country illegally, we won't help them. In fact, we will help you. That is their message to the criminal gangs. We will help you. We will threaten those people with immediate detention and deportation so that you can increase your control over those trafficking victims. This bill is a trafficker's charter. Because remember those hundreds of children missing from asylum hotels? The ones who have almost certainly been picked up by the smuggler and trafficking gangs? This bill makes it even harder to get those kids back, makes it even easier for those gangs to increase their control. It means no sanctuary or just temporary support at most for Eritrean girls who will most likely have been raped or exploited, or for the 12 and 13 year olds that I met a few years ago brought here by gangs from Afghanistan, or for children who endure what happened to Mo Farah. They would be denied refuge. They would be denied citizenship. They would be locked up and threatened with return. The Home Secretary may not want to admit it, but that is what this bill does. It denies citizenship forever for people like Mo Farah. The Tory party once voted to introduce safeguards on the detention of children, and they were right to do so. The Tory party once voted to introduce the Modern Slavery Bill, and they were right to do so. But what has happened to them now? How low have they fallen, and how far down are they trying to drag our proud country? Because that is what this is. It is an attempt to drag our whole country down. They know this bill won't work to stop boat crossings or to stop the gangs. They know it won't clear the backlog. They know it will make the chaos worse. They know it will stop children and trafficking gangs getting help and play into the hands of criminal gangs. And they know it will undermine our reputation in the eyes of the world as a country that believes in the rule of law. But they don't care. Because this is about political gains. Yeah. This is about a lame Prime Minister making promises that he has no intention of keeping. All he wants is a dividing line. All he wants is to pick a fight. And all he wants is someone else to blame. In past eras, there has been consensus, for example, on support for Syrian refugees, go back generations on support for the kinder transport. There has been that support in place. We've exactly. also had past consensus exactly. about the kind of practical, sensible measures around border security as well. I believe it should be possible to build that consensus, and we would work with the government to do that. But that is not what we are getting from the Conservative Party, the Conservative Government, the Prime Minister and the Home Secretary. Instead, we have got a Home Secretary who is quite happy to ramp up the rhetoric rather than ever build a calm consensus around a practical plan that sorts things out. And how desperate does it become if what you're doing is ramping up hostility and hatred towards the victims of trafficking and slavery? That is not leadership. Britain is better than this. Yeah. Mr Deputy Speaker, Labour will vote for action to stop the gangs and to prevent these dangerous boat crossings. We'll vote for a new cross-border police unit, for fast-track decisions and returns, to clear the backlog and end hotel use, for new agreements with France and other countries on returns, on family reunion, on reforming resettlement. We will vote for action that rebuilds border security and restores a properly functioning, credible asylum and refugee system that is properly controlled. But we will not vote for more chaos. We will not vote for a traffickers charter that lets criminal gangs off the hook, that fails to tackle dangerous boat crossings and that locks up children and leaves some of the most vulnerable people exactly. undermined. Exactly. We won't vote for this bill tonight. Yeah. Yeah.